So we're talking about those documentaries, which are on TV tonight and tomorrow on Channel 4. Your view, 81333. Start your message with Word Radio on the text. Is it possible to separate the man from his music? Earlier, I spoke to Charles Thompson, an investigative journalist who's looked into the allegations made against Michael Jackson. I've spoken to multiple people who were in the Sundance screening a couple of weeks ago. And what I've been told is basically in line with what the director has been saying in all his interviews, which is that it's extremely one-sided. The director only sought to interview the accusers and did not seek to investigate or interrogate any of their allegations and see whether they withstood scrutiny. So it's basically the UK version is about three and a half hours long, I think. And it's just three and a half hours of people telling stories. Okay. And... What was the impression that the people that you've spoken to who've seen the film, did it change their mind one way or the other about what they think of Michael Jackson and his behaviour? Well, the people I spoke to were researchers and journalists who have been covering the Michael Jackson case for many years. So they walked into the documentary to see whether it provided any evidence to support these allegations and and could change their minds. They all came away saying it doesn't include any evidence to corroborate any of these allegations. It's just people telling stories and they didn't find it convincing. So uh, what are you thinking now? I'm thinking that what we're witnessing is a catastrophic failure of journalism. As a journalist, it makes me deeply sad and disturbed to witness what's going on in my industry right now with regard to the coverage of this TV show. These men have been suing Michael Jackson's estate for the last five years, asking for hundreds of millions of dollars. And that case has generated thousands of pages of public record court documents, which any journalist who wants to read them, they can get hold of them in five minutes flat. They don't even need to go to the court because they're already all over the Internet. And those thousands of pages of documents contain a litany of instances which have catastrophically undermined these men's stories. One of them was actually caught deliberately lying under oath. The judge reprimanded him throughout his entire witness statement because he'd been deliberately dishonest and said that no rational juror could believe his story. These men's cases have been tossed out of court twice already and they're in the middle of appealing. Nobody in the media is looking at these court documents. Nobody is scrutinizing all of the contradictions and the stuff that doesn't add up in their stories, uh, even though it's public record information. And, and the media has a duty to do that. The director of this TV show has said quite freely in all his interviews that he decided to only tell one side of the story. He decided to interview the accusers and not to go off and investigate anything they were saying. And the media is now doing the same thing. They're just watching the documentary, parroting what it says, but nobody's making any attempt to go off and investigate and scrutinise the allegations. The evidence is there. You can find it in five minutes flat on the internet. Okay, so should Channel 4 be showing these documentaries? Well, here's what's a fact. Channel 4 could not have made and aired this documentary if Michael Jackson was alive because it contains absolutely no evidence to corroborate any of the allegations that it contains. So, under But he Michael can't Jackson sue them now alive, that he's dead. Exactly. Libel law in the UK and in America does not protect the dead. So the second you die, anybody in the media can say absolutely anything they want to about you and they don't have to have any evidence. If Michael Jackson was alive, this documentary could not be screened. So it's it's basically abusing a loophole in libel laws, and it is not only not providing evidence to corroborate the allegations, but it's deliberately covering up a wealth of public record information which catastrophically undermines the allegations. So so just a final thought then, Charles, that you know, TV can't prosecute anybody. Do the police need to look at these allegations in America and establish whether they're true or not? I don't know whether the police in America do um, investigate allegations against deceased people. I don't know if that's possible. I mean, looking at the evidence in the court case, which has been ongoing for five years, or lack thereof, I could say, there is absolutely no way this would pass the threshold of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. The doubt is far beyond reasonable. It's overwhelming. I mean, the the main accuser has changed his story like five different times since he started alleging abuse. Both men have a huge financial motive for telling the story. They're asking for hundreds of millions of dollars. The the documentary doesn't even mention that. It's a three and a half hour documentary. They don't even find five seconds to tell you that these men are in the middle of suing Michael Jackson's estate for hundreds of millions of dollars. So I, I can't see how this could possibly meet the threshold for a prosecution if Michael Jackson was alive.
There you go. There's another view of Michael Jackson and this documentary that's uh, being screened tonight and tomorrow. Charles Thompson speaking to me earlier. The MJ Cast.